Hi, happy Monday. Today I wanted to come on here and talk to you about how I like to structure a class period for elementary students. Um, a lot of music teachers, your schools may be different. Um, you may get the kids once a week. You may see students twice a week. Um, or you may be one of those schools like I was at where I had a small school. Some students I would see um, Tuesday, Thursday, and then the following week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Since I only had two classes, I mean, yeah, two classes per grade, I saw them a lot. I know at my son's school, they only go to music once a week. But this will, this, these ideas will work for even um, whether you're a homeschool mom or you see the kids once a week or you see them two or three times a week. So here's a typical, um, here's a typical, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? Typical way I structure a class period. So when you first get the kids in, we always do a warm up. It will be either a vocal warm up, um, a body percussion warm up, or both. It just depends on what we have going on that day and how much um, I have planned in that class period. So um, vocal warm ups can range from, you know, follow my finger, woo, or um, let's sing soul fetch together, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do or any other kind of vocal warm-up you can think of. You probably have some books or things. Um, body percussion, I've done a few body percussion. You know, repeat after me. <laughs> then they do that. <laughs> Basically, they have to do what you do. Or you always have some kind of body percussion you start the class with. I used to do that. I taught the kids this body percussion rondo, and as they came in, they get, went to their seats. They knew this is how we were starting the class period, and if you have something you're starting with right away, then that cuts down on the talking and the walking around the room and not finding their seats. They know right away we're starting something. Their minds have to focus on it, whether it's singing or body percussion, and then they are ready to start. Okay, so after you do your warm-up, then you um, will obviously start teaching a lesson. This will this will vary depend on what you're doing. So let's say you're working on a program with second and third grade. Well that's gonna be your focus for that lesson or probably for a month. Um, but even when I was teaching my kids the program music, I was all also um, adding in other stuff like towards the end of class. So we were still doing other things. But a typical class period is after a warm up, let's say we're learning a new song. Before we do that, we're going to review a song we learned from last week. Okay? So we're, you review the song from last week, you review the activity that went along with it, whether it was a dance or instruments you added to it, then you move on. Okay? So the new song we're going to learn today is, and then you do the new song. You learn the song first by teaching, you know, the music, <laughs> teaching them the words. Then, usually with every song, this was one of my hardest parts. With every song, you're like, okay, I can either now add a dance. Okay, now I can add instruments. Okay, now I can add movement um, with our bodies. Now I can add, um, gosh, I don't know. There's some sign language. Some of the books come with sign language to teach the songs. There's so many things you can add to each song, so don't get caught up on that. Don't get caught up on, okay, I have a song. There's like 10 things I can do with this song. How do I figure out what I'm supposed to be doing with this song? What I used to do is I would take a song and say, okay, well, the last song I did a lot of instruments with it, so let's do a lot of movement with this one. Then, or I'd base it on the song. If there's not a lot of instrument parts that would sound interesting with that, if it would be better of just being singing or it's like a fast-paced song that would be fun to add movement to, then do that. And also base it by ages. The younger kids get them moving a lot because they cannot sit still. And you'll notice you're going to have a lot of, probably like later in the year, more they can play instruments more. But at the beginning of the school year, you're going to have a lot of them, they play instruments right away. But what I mean is with the younger kids, my rule was get them moving more and then some instruments and older kids movement, but then start doing more um, instruments. So it kind of flips. If that makes sense. All right. So you're learning a new song. So let's just say, for sake of time, we are we learned our new song. Now, okay, we learned this song. Now everybody stand up. We're going to add movement to it. We're going to learn a folk dance to this song. So then I would say, okay, 
um, back two rows. I want you to stand in a straight line right here. These two rows stand in a straight line right here and face each other. Here's how this dance goes. And then you would teach them the dance. All right, if you're homeschooling, you can still add movement to songs. Teach your kiddos a song and then teach them movement. They can even watch a video with movement or they can just learn a, learn movement to the songs by themselves. That's totally fine. Um, so after you do that and you do the dance, um, a lot of times I usually, so warm up will take about five minutes. Let's say you have a 45 minute class period, okay? Warm up will take five minutes and then you will, and I'll type some notes notes in the comments so you can remember what I'm saying. Okay, so warm up will take five minutes and then teaching a new, or review a song for probably two minutes. Don't spend a lot of time on the review if you've worked on a song last week. Um, and then the new song with the dance you're adding will take about 15 minutes. Now, you can always review that song the next class period and say, we did movement, now we're gonna add instruments. Do you see, you don't have to just stop just because you taught that song. You can do it in two class periods. You don't have to try to finish it all. So, so far that's five minutes, seven minutes, 15 minutes. So after you do that, I always like to do some kind of fun music game or activity. So, um, uh, passing game, sitting on the floor, passing the beanbag, or um, standing up. Uh, one of the fun ones is having instruments taped to their back, and they have to walk around and ask, who am I, by um, asking questions about what they are, before, and then they'll figure out what their instrument is. There's a whole lot of music games to do, but spend about 10 minutes on that. And then before you leave, I always like to incorporate um, music integration, you know, music, uh, it's a big part to me, is integrating music with other subjects. So. Picking, it doesn't even have to be a music book, but you can pick out any book. Let's say it's a rhyming book and have the kids pat their legs each time you say a rhyming word. And you'll notice, like, let's use Dr. Seuss's example. Um, all, his, all his words can be read to a steady beat. One fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish, okay? So they can pat the steady beat or just pat on the rhyming words. One, one fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish, okay? And then, so you've done your music game at the end. And then when it's time to go, just like at the beginning when you did a warm up, do some kind of closing where you're having the kids answer questions. I like to do bullet questions where, okay, so today we learned this song. What did we say when you put two parts together? It's called a what? Someone raises their hand harmony. That's right, okay. Now what do you do when we get louder? What's that called? Um, dynamics. Okay, good. You see what I'm saying? You keep asking questions. Make, don't spend a lot of time on it because they'll get bored with it. But keep asking questions and get um, have them answer them. And then, and then another um, good um, exit is sing a song as they're lining up. And you're going to probably have a procedure for that, but sing a song as they're lining up. And this is just a really good way to structure your class period. Don't just um, wing it. There's some days I did. Don't get me wrong because sometimes the lessons I plan they did not go the way I thought they would. <laughs> so always have a plan, but then if you have to like differ from it a little bit, that's totally fine. But have um, kind of like a consistent outline of what you're going to be teaching and how you're gonna be teaching that class period. So when they leave, there's never been like a lull. There's always been, okay, we're doing this, we're doing this, we're doing this, so there's always something to do. Incorporate activities where they're sitting and writing music or have them color to music that they're listening to. That's a music appreciation activity. Um, the kids love to do freeze dance. You just play a song and then they dance, they move to it. When you stop the music, they have to freeze. That's a fun activity for them. There's so many, and I'll come on here one day and talk to you about my favorite activities to do with kids, my favorite songs, things like that. But today I just wanted to mainly talk about the structure of a class period. All right, have a great Monday, and I will talk to you later.